Hello and welcome to Game Cottage. I'm Rachel and today we will be talking about how to set up and run a motion capture shoot. This is our motion capture studio. We have 24 Vicon Vantage cameras that we operate on a Vicon Shogun system. Our capture volume is 1500 square feet. So we will be starting by calibrating the motion capture studio. All right, so here's Eclipse. We're gonna start by opening a new database. Here our database is already open, so we're just gonna start by clicking new project, new capture day, and new capture session. Now we're going to go into Shogun and click start masking. And then once all the lights turn dark blue, we'll hit stop masking. Then hit start wave and grab the wand. Make sure that you are not looking at the lights when you turn the wand on, it is bad for your eyes. And then you will start painting the mocap capture volume by walking along the red line and moving the wand in an infinity motion. Besides being an excellent arm workout, the reason for this is so that the cameras know exactly where they should be looking for your actors. Your actors should try to stay within the red lines as much as possible, but if they end up between the red and green lines, the cameras sh should still be able to pick them up. The lights on the cameras are going to start out as like a flashing like purplish magenta color and as the cameras become calibrated they will change the lights will change to a green and once all the lights turn green all the camera lights will just turn off and that is how you'll know that the cameras are all fully calibrated at that point you will leave the wand at the origin have the long end facing the basketball hoop and head back to the computer and click stop wave. Once the computer finishes um, calibrating all the cameras, hit start set origin and stop set origin and then you may retrieve the wand. Turn it off and put it away. Make sure not to stare at directly into the red lights. Next you are going to grab some clusters and place them on the ground in a triangle shape and you will head back to the computer and hit set floor plane and set floor extents. And the reason you do that is because the, gr the ground may not actually be completely flat where you are working, so it will make the ground even so the cameras know exactly how level your floor is. Next we're going to marker the actors. So you're going to start by asking the actors what size they wear and give them a shirt and pants of that size. Tell them that the shirts must be tucked into the pants. You will also give them gloves and a cap. You will then use Velcro strips to tighten any loose pieces of fabric, as well as making sure that the pants are securely fastened to the shirt. And you will also put a Velcro strip on top of the zipper at the top of the suit, as well as across the bra line. Now you can start placing markers on the actors. So you're gonna put one on top of the zipper in the top of the suit, and then one on each shoulder. These three must be in a straight line. You will then also put a marker on the bra line and then three along the hips. Ask your actor to T-pose and then place two markers on top of each arm. Make sure one arm has the markers higher up than the other. And this is so the camera knows which one is the left and which one is the right. Next, you will make sure to frame the elbows. Have your actor bend and extend their arm a few times and make sure that the markers do not move. Put one marker on each side of the wrist and then use one marker to frame the index knuckle and one to frame the pinky knuckle. Have the actor turn around and put 
one marker at the highest point on a suit right on the back of the neck put one marker on each shoulder one on the bra line and three along the hips Put one marker on the top of the head, one on each temple, and then two on the back. On the legs, you'll put one marker on the thigh and one on the shin, and make sure that one leg, the markers are higher up than the other, and like the arms, this is so that the camera knows which is the left side and which is the right side. And you can have your actor sit down and frame the kneecap. Have your actor kick out and bend their leg a few times so that you can make sure the markers on the knees do not move. Put markers on the ankles and then that is all the markers that you'll be placing on the body. There should be 45 in total. Next, we will be markering the fingers. The finger markers should be placed right below the fingernail. Next, we are going to calibrate the actors. So bring them into the motion capture volume. You will select um, male or female, with fingers or without fingers, depending on your actors and your marker setup. And then type in the actor's name and hit create. Have your actor move around a little bit so the cameras can find them. Once the cameras have found them, have them stand in an A pose and hit accept A pose. Now your actors can start doing uh, their range of motion. So their range of, for the range of motion, they will pretty much be going through all of their joints and moving them around. Um, the reason that this is really important is because the markers will be blocked at some point during the shoot, whether it be by the actor's own body, by props, by other actors. So the range of motion data makes it so that the computer is able to fill in where a marker should be if it is blocked. As you can see in Shogun, there are 63 markers listed. And that is because you have 45 on the body and then you put 10 on the hands and then the rest come from the shoes. So all together, that will make 63 markers. Another important thing to keep in mind when working with actors in the motion capture volume is that they should there should not be anything reflective in the motion capture volume because the um, computer will think that it is another marker. So the only things that should be reflective are the markers. Anything else like jewelry, watches, like um, sometimes like belt clips and stuff should just make sure that all of that is left in another room so that the cameras don't accidentally pick it up. Hit stop calibrating when your actor is done and then you can change the color of the suit and Shogun to match your actor's favorite color. As you can see there's some flickering going on and that's because there are multiple actors currently checked. You should whenever you're um, working, make sure only the actors that are currently in the motion capture volume have their boxes checked. Otherwise, you will get this flickering motion. So once I uncheck it, the flickering will stop. Now we can start recording. So have your actor start in a T pose on the origin. Um, type in the name of the motion, hit start capture, and tell your actor mocap rolling. Your actor can then do whatever motion they need to do. And when they are done, they can stop anywhere in the capture volume, but most must face the front and T-pose. Hit stop capture, 
and then your actor must return to the origin in T-pose before starting their next emotion. The reason that the actors must start at the origin in a T-pose is because that um, it helps with the animation cleanup process. It makes it much easier to retarget and clean up the animation if it is started in a T-pose on the origin. Also, if you accidentally have more than one actor checked while only one actor is in the motion capture volume, when you bring the data into your animation program, you will have a skeleton just lying on the ground, which is another reason why you have to be careful and make sure that only the actors who are currently in the volume are checked. Once you're ready to process the data, you will go into Shogun Post, uncheck Reprocess MCP, hit Add Files, and then select all of your MCP files and hit Open. Then you will click Start, and all of the files will begin processing. This can take a while, but once it is done, all of your MCP files will be have converted into FBXs, which can then be dragged directly into Motion Builder or Maya or whatever software you are using to clean up your motion capture data. And that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you want to learn about how to clean up motion capture data, I have another video about that on this channel. I would also like to give a shout out to Hannah Shea for helping me out with this video. She is a motion capture technician and animator and I will leave a link below if you want to check her out. If you have not subscribed to Game Cottage, please do so for more content like this. Um, thank you for stopping by. Have a nice day.